learned how to get our JavaScript to talk to our websites and grab elements. And now what we want to do is actually learn how to respond to an event when the button is actually clicked. So there's a few things to know. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit here. Let me open this up here. So we're using a form and an input, okay? That's a little bit different than doing something like this. If I have a if I have a button here, okay, a button, and then I say calculate, and let's just go to our page here. Okay, so calculate and calculate. Oh, we lost our live connection here, but that's okay. I had to refresh. So these look the same, right? But they're not. Okay, the, the way that you interact with these buttons uh, is is not the same. Like you on a button like this, if you wanted to. Um, respond to an event. You could do it here in HTML or you could do it in your JavaScript. And, and you're going to use on click. And then you're going to set it to some function like uh, my on, cl on clicker. Okay. And that's how you're going to work with buttons. But we're not going to do that in this video. But I wanted you to be aware of it because you're going to find it on the internet and you're going to possibly want to be like, I used on click on my input type submit and it's not working what is going on or it's not working the way I expect it to. And there are some differences between input type submit and the button. So what I want you to do as part of your own homework and time, I want you to go onto Google and do a search difference between input submit and button. And there are going to be a whole bunch of articles that say all the differences between using this input type and this button type. And uh, you'll learn a lot and it'll do you some good to go check that out. In our case here, we are using input type submit and value equals calculate. And we have to handle it a special way. But so how do we do that? How do we work with a form and an input? Because obviously we're not going to use the on click like I just mentioned. Well, uh, this is where the form comes into play. So the first things first is we actually have to grab the form right here. And so we're going to say var, this is called this form, equals document dot get element by ID. And we haven't given it a ID yet, but we're just going to call this x is what percent of y. We get a very specific name in case we have more than one form for the other operations. And then over here in index.html, I'm just going to set an ID on the form. Okay. We're not even going to use the button uh, itself to uh, listen for a click. Okay, the form is going to listen for an event, which is which is a little bit different. Not the button, but the form itself. So we've grabbed the form, and what do we do now? Well, we say form dot add event listener. In fact, look at that. That's pretty cool. It had some properties that pop up. Add event listener uh, type is a string. The event a capture bool. So there's three different properties that you can put in here or uh, parameters. Okay, uh, we're going to use. We're going to use two of them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say form to add event listener. Okay. We want to listen for submit. Now, this is a, a very specific keyword. I did not make this up. This is a reserved keyword. Okay. You have to spell it correctly. Otherwise, it will not work. We are looking for the submit event. Okay. And then we're going to pass a function in here. And this function here is the function to be called when the form is clicked. Now, I'm doing an inline function here. If this is confusing you at all, we could also have done this. So we could have said var and my calc function equals function. Okay, and then instead of doing this, we could have said my calc function. And that would have worked just the same, and then this function would be called when the event is triggered. Okay, but the re I don't see any need to do that. And the reason why is this function is very specific. It's not really reusable, meaning like the other percentage uh, operations that we may do would not use the same code. It would use different code. And that's not what we're looking for because our code does a very specific thing. So I'm going to create the inline function here as a parameter. So this function here called add event listener, the first parameter in it is a string and the second parameter is a function and this again this may be confusing to you if you're brand new what is going on how am I creating a function inside of another function parameter it doesn't make sense and um, you know in many languages this this is something that you'll never do you'll never actually define a function within a um, a parameter itself uh, but uh, we have that advantage in JavaScript so that's what we're doing here we have a function this is the function that will be called after the button is clicked. Okay. And so we're adding the event listener to the form. I can't stress that enough. If you're adding this to the button, it won't work and you'll probably get frustrated. So add it to the form that the button is inside. 
okay? We put the button inside the form. There's three inputs, one is a type submit, and it's inside the form, okay? Are you with me so far? You're like, yeah, shut up about saying that already. I got it the first time. I'm just, uh, just letting you know. So what do we wanna do? We wanna take the data from the two fields, okay? and then run the math operation and then spit it back out into the results string. Okay, but first things first is probably just making sure that we this even worked. Okay, so let's do that now. Say alert and we, cl we clickety clacked something. Okay, so let's go back to our code. I'm gonna refresh the page because I think it's still disconnected. Click calculate and we clickety clacked something. So it, def it definitely worked, okay? Definitely worked. So uh, we get these elements to get to listen to them, and on the once we have the element, we add the event listener. You can't add the event listener until you actually have the element, as you can see right here, okay? Something to keep in mind. Uh, some people like to do this, so they don't like to actually store it in a variable at all, okay? They like to do something like this, where you actually do uh, function chaining, and so we say document dot get element by ID, and then once it finds it, okay, instead of storing it in a variable, we're just using it the once, and we add the event listener to it right here on the spot. That's another thing you can do. It's a little bit long and kind of sloppy, so I don't typically do it unless I see a need for it. So we're gonna just store the variable here and then call add the event listener on it. Okay. So we got this going now. Now we need to grab the data from the two elements here and get them uh, and and calculate the the things on it. So. What happens though, if there's no data in those fields? Okay, so for instance, let's say that I wanna get the data out of those fields. We already know how to do that, right? The dot value. So if I say var x equals numfield one dot value, and var y equals numfield one dot value, okay? And then what I do is I, let's say alert, and we're gonna say, Uh, let's say x plus space, oops, plus space plus y. Okay, let's see what happens when this when I don't enter, enter any data in here and I re refresh the page. Okay, it's blank. Okay, that's not good. Uh, do you think we're getting any errors? Let's see here. I just opened up the console. Whoa, that's kind of off the screen here. Okay, so let's let's turn off this alert here too let's just console.log these bad boys console.log let's say x and console.log let's say y okay so as you can see nothing's happening right it's all blank this is this is bad this is not good our fields are null um oops and this should be number field two of course there we go that's that's more like it and uh yeah, so nothing's there, right? So we should check for that because we don't we don't want to run a math operation on something that doesn't exist, like right? Like, let's go ahead and do that now. So this is called uh, validation, form validation. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say if, okay, numfield one. So if not numfield one dot value, okay, or if not numfield two dot value, okay. So what we're saying here is if this is null or undefined, okay? So um, doing the not sign here, okay? We'll actually check for null and undefined. So if there's no value, if it's null or undefined on this one, or if it's null or undefined on this one, let's let the user know. So alert, please enter values in the fields. Ah, so if there's an error, we go we go into there. Otherwise, we'll actually do the math operation. Okay, this is called validation. Okay, let's go ahead and run the page and see what happens. Calculate. Oh, please enter values in the field. So it knows now. So we actually wrote some uh, validation, some error handling here. If there's no data in here, please um, let's go ahead or please enter values in the fields. We sent up an alert. Otherwise, this means it worked. Okay, what we want to do is we want to get the values here. The problem that we have though is values from text fields are text. We can't do math operations on texts, can we? Well, let's see what happens. What if we say console.log? Okay, 
x plus y. So let's see what happens. I'm curious myself. So what if we say um, 5 is what percent of 10, which should be like 50%, right? We calculate it. Oops, our, our form reset. That's another problem that we're going to have to solve here. It, you didn't see it print because it went so fast. Uh, so what we want to do here is let's, uh, let's do an alert instead. Alert x plus y. That's another problem we're going to have to solve that you'll run into as a developer as well. Okay, so let's again say 5 plus 10. Calculate. What? 5, 10. Right? It's not right. We got, we got to do some magic here. And if you were trying to go ahead and do this on your own, you probably solved this problem here. That's not going to work for us. We can't just we can't just work with string fields here, okay? So there's a different thing we need to do, okay? We need to, I'm going to Command X or Control X this, and we're going to say parse float. And what this function does, okay, this is a built-in function. What it's going to do is it's going to take your string, and it's going to turn it into a float or floating point number, a number with a decimal. Now, of course, you probably are remembering that I've said in past that all JavaScript numbers are floats, which they are, but if you don't parse the float, and let's say you did parse int, it will actually truncate the, the decimal behind it. And we don't want to do that in case the user adds a decimal. Okay, so parse float for the first field, and then we want to do the same thing for the second field. Parse float, and that's going to take a string and turn it uh, into a number. Now if I do alert, and I say x plus y, Okay, and then we run the page, calculate it. Uh, oops, we got to put the numbers in. So this would be like 5 plus 10, right? It's 15. So now it actually works. It didn't say 5, 10. It actually did the math operation. Very important. Before you can work with numbers, you always need to convert them um, into numbers from strings, okay? So when working with strings, if you need to do math operations on them, you always got to parse them into a number. You will use this a lot, okay? So let's go ahead and call this video done. We've done a few things here. We've talked about adding event listeners onto forms. Uh, and then we did a little bit of validation, okay, on these fields here to make sure they're not empty. And then we sent an error message appropriate for the situation to the user. And then we learned how to actually turn strings into numbers so we can start working with them. So uh, really good stuff here. More to come. Mark Price here at devslopes.com. Moving on and forward.